a woman who had decided on divorce. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and He will have mercy on them, and to our God, for He will freely pardon. Isaiah 55, 7 My heart ached as I listened to her story. I thought she was praiseworthy for even managing to continue living. How many children do you have? Two. Thinking of them, I could never divorce my husband. But thinking of his betrayal, I can't possibly live with him anymore. The despair of this woman in her mid-thirties was one of the most common stories in this world. Her husband, whom she had trusted without a single shred of doubt, had gotten in an inappropriate relationship with her best friend, and both of them were also Christians. Since then, her mind was in turmoil with all kinds of imaginative scenarios. The fiery wrath in her heart ceaselessly told her to reveal everything to the world and destroy their lives. But she tried to maintain her composure. The prevailing thought in her mind was that they should forgive him and continue to live with him for the sake of the children. Her husband also asked for forgiveness. However, as much as she wanted to forgive him, she found it extremely difficult to do so. She couldn't bear the hatred she felt toward him. She could not stay in the same space with him because she would feel as if she was being suffocated. Yet, once he left home, she couldn't wait until he called her and appeared back in front of her eyes again. Always in thought, she looked at him with eyes filled with suspicion. She checked his cell phone. She could not understand why she hated to be around him yet longed for his presence at the same time. Hatred and jealousy never left her mind at peace for a moment. The children trembled in deep anxiety because of the cold war between their mom and dad. They were in fear, walking on eggshells when around their parents. She thought that she might even need to enter a psychiatric hospital. She was about to go insane with the thoughts that troubled her night and day. She cried a lot while telling her story. I suggested she go back to God. How can I find my way back to God? She was bright and smart. She wanted to know how she could go back to God. Controlling your thoughts is the way to go back to Him. But I can't control my thoughts. Does that mean I can't go back to God? There are always two thoughts coming into our minds, and we are the ones who make the decision on which one to choose, God's or Satan's. If we are thinking grim and negative thoughts, it means you have chosen Satan. Going back to God means to abandon those dark thoughts. She was very surprised by my explanation. Is that right? I've never heard this kind of explanation in my life. But how is it possible to keep yourself away from those dark thoughts? I really want to be free from them, yet I always end up thinking those thoughts again. Right, no human has the power to stop those grim thoughts. That's why one can cut themselves free from those thoughts only when they receive power of God. When you first decide to ignore and not allow the thoughts from Satan and pray to Jesus, God will fill you with His power to free yourself from the sinful thoughts. Heavenly power comes only when one's self dies. If not, the power cannot come. Experiencing the power of God is called worshipping Jehovah, knowing God, and loving God. She understood for what she needed now was the freedom from those sinful and dark thoughts. The feeling of burning jealousy whirled around in her mind. It was time for her to decide. Was she going to go back to God or not? 
her sinful nature still cherished the ill feelings of jealousy and hatred, while the other thought was telling her to cast those feelings away. The fight between her nature, which wanted to keep thinking about how she could get revenge, and her conscience, which was telling her that she should control her thoughts, was ever so fierce. The jealousy in her mind grew bigger than ever to keep her from choosing God, and her sinful nature loved feeling jealous. The two thoughts in her mind were at war with one another. She struggled hard in order to choose God over her nature. It was a desperate struggle with herself. She finally made up her mind that she wanted to stop being jealous. Then she began to call upon Jesus with all her might and soul. She called for Jesus with the desperation of a person drowning in water. Her appeal was genuine and sincere. At once, the dreadful wrath and jealousy unbelievably vanished like a fog. She finally began to breathe the air of heaven. Heavenly air. It was peace and joy. She was finally able to control the thoughts in her mind. The victory over her sinful nature led her to become more mature. After experiencing the heavenly peace, which is the most precious gift in the world, she could finally forgive her husband. She was now filled with thankfulness that her mind was no longer troubled because of feelings, emotions, or intuitions.